Welcome to the Highlights channel of the Ranveer Show. Quick fire, heavy information clips available for you now. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video and enjoy it. Let's start with a very simple question for you. This is, comes in from every single Indian teenager or college student who's arguing with his parents about protein shakes being safe for human consumption by a young adult or a teenager. What do you have to say to the parents? Well, when it comes to uh, protein, for instance, we'll use that as an example. People think, they, they quickly assume that it's some sort of performance enhancement. It's, it's a steroid when it isn't. All it is, is the dairy, uh, yeah, the protein that's extracted from the dairy, such as the milk, without a lot of the fat, without the lactose, and a lot of the time it's just naturally flavored. Mm. So there's nothing wrong with it. However, you got to look at the source, make sure that number one, it isn't from black market, it's from a reputable source. And all it's there is to help that person get their protein requirements in when they're weightlifting. You know, yeah. it's absolutely fine. Now, the age, look, I'm an owner of a supplement company, so I can't say, yeah, 15 year old is fine. Anything over the age of 18 is, is fine. Up until then, you should just focus on your nutrition, your food, making sure that you have a decent amount of food in your program because you can't replace food. You know, you, 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 the supplement is there just to supplement your diet. But anything over the age of 18, you're good to go. Are you saying that from an ethical place in terms of you got to make a kid work hard for his muscle gains? Of course. Okay. Yeah, like um, mm. I didn't start taking supplements until I was about 25 years old. You know, up until then, I was choking down mm. tins of tuna and <laughs> dry potato, looking in the magazines going, I want to be one of those guys. Mm. And I think the difference is that once I, you start having protein shakes, you just get results slightly faster. Am I right? Well, it's more convenient to get that amount of protein in because if you're eating six meals a day, it gets pretty boring mm. and, you know, pretty quick. Mm. So if you're able to drink some of those meals and it tastes good, it's a chocolate shake, you can put the chocolate powder on your boring oats, it just makes it a lot easier. Mm. And straight after your workouts, you want to try to repair the damaged muscle tissue that you've created in the gym, that trauma, as soon as humanly possible. And there's nothing more bioavailable than a protein isolate. Egg whites are going to be number two. So if you can't get the protein in, then have the egg white, sure. But how many people want to have eight egg whites? <laughs> Not many. So a protein shake makes it a lot more convenient. Yeah. So it's just the convenience factor. Convenience of... and the bioavailability. Mm. Um, you know, we spoke about how much protein is required by the human body if you're active. Whether you're putting on muscle or whether you're burning off fat, it's roughly um, X, X grams per pound of body weight. One gram per pound of body weight, yeah. Okay, one gram per pound of body weight. Now, in saying that, if you go above that one gram per pound of body weight, do you get faster results or is there like an upper limit? There is a limit for sure. Like I usually go up to about 1.5, but I train extremely hard. And a lot of my clients train me extremely hard and they're breaking down a lot of tissue. So like, for maybe 20 years, I've basically had sore legs mm. from my leg workouts. You know, I find it funny when people go, oh, my legs are so sore. And I'm like, God, I don't know what it's like not to have sore legs. Mm. But that's the way I train. So I require a little bit more protein than, uh, than the average uh, person. You know, it all comes down to how hard, you, how hard you train and what body part you're training on that particular day. If you're training just your biceps, you're not going to need as much as, say, if you're training your back. Mm. Um how many scoops of protein should one consume? Say if a scoop is about 25 grams of protein. It all depends on the size of the individual. But can you go up to like three or four? Yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah. Like I have uh, some clients who find it very inconvenient to eat because of their job requirements, their traveling or something like that. So some of them will have like five or six scoops a day, but they'll eat three meals. So if somebody does have protein, uh, let's say as one meal, then I don't want them to have protein as a second, second meal as well, or protein powder. I need some sort of sustenance in their body. I need more micronutrients in there, more of a balance approach. So they can alternate meal, protein powder, meal, protein powder. I will allow that. So if a young person comes to you, and I also include women in this young person yeah. angle, uh, and if they say, hey, Chris, should I be taking protein supplements? I'm going about my weight training. 
what would you say next? Over the 18, for sure, yeah, you can include that maybe straight after your workout. Mm. If you're having your oats in the morning, you want to have a scoop in there instead of egg whites, sure. Mm. And even if they're not active in the gym? If they're not active in the, in the gym, yeah, sure, maybe one one scoop a day is absolutely fine. It's like my parents aren't really active in the gym, but they'll have a couple of scoops of protein per day because as you get a little bit older, you go through muscle atrophy as well. So you require protein, but do they work out? No. Mm. Uh, I think the other argument against protein shakes in general is that it supposedly puts a load on your organs, specifically your kidney. Is there any scientific truth to this? Nothing. Nothing, Nothing. whatsoever. You won't find any scientific truth to that because your body will digest protein powder easier than any other food, period. Mm. Also in Indian gyms, the narrative, and this is something I've also followed as a trainer, probably just to get people into a better habit. I've always told people that the moment you start lifting weights, drink a lot more water. For sure. Because your protein absorption also becomes faster. So I've gotten a lot more people to drink more water, which then has countless other benefits. But say if you are combining a lack of water intake with a lot of protein consumption, I'm not just talking about protein shakes, I'm also talking about meat, paneer, whatever, protein sources. That can lead to problems, right? Yeah, your know, body's made up of about 75% H2O. So if you're not feeding the fluid to that body, then the body's just not going to function. The brain's not going to function correctly either. Mm. A lot of people have headaches, and it's not because they need uh, paracetamol or aspirin. It's because they're dehydrated. The brain's dehydrated. Gotcha. You know, and the muscles cannot contract adequately without proper hydration. So is the test for hydration the urine test where you look at your piss and you see it clear and then that probably means you're hydrated. But the moment you see it a little yellow, means you've got to go and drink some water. Is that the correct way of going That's the correct way. But if you're going to take certain vitamins as well, that can lead to yellow water, as well, uh, yellow piss as well. So, <laughs> you know, you've got to look at it. When are you taking your vitamins as well? How do you know how much water to drink? Um, it, it all depends on how much that person sweats. But I usually have my clients on about a gallon of water a day. If it's a smaller female, for instance, it could be like three to four liters. Mm. Uh, but for a bigger kind of guy, it's usually a five plus. Gotcha. That was the video for today. Make sure you hit like, subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends. TRS Clips will be back soon.